Buddy Julia, hello, are you there? Yes, she is brilliant. Anyway, I'm sorry. That's quite all right. Uh, we don't seem to have Sheila with us, but never mind. Morning, Amanda. Hello. So. Hi, Brian. Morning, Sha Morning, Carol. Morning. Was it a nice lion, Julia? We're having a live broadcast now, guys, if you can just be aware of that. Uh, oh, I seem to have lost the screen share. Hang on. There we go. So, this is just a brief overview of all the 101 ways that you can find customers in this business. Because a lot of people, when they start off, they say, Whoa, how do I find customers? Well, we're just going to give you a quick overview of some of the many, many ways that you can. There are lots and lots and lots of different options. Launches, we're going to be talking about this morning. Uh, show and tell, which is like a mini launch. Or, as we, we have, thanks to Steve for this one, try and buy. And I find that works really, really well to say to people, look, just come and try the products. You know, you don't need to buy them unless you've, you've tried them and you like them. Word of mouth, really important in this business. Facebook, which is another kind of word of mouth thing. Pop boxes, Julie is going to be talking about those in a minute. Julia and Tilly are going to be talking about those in a minute. Pamper parties, we're going to be covering tomorrow, as are, we're also going to be doing events, fairs, tabletops, all those different ways of getting out and meeting new people. The weight management, which is a huge part of the, the growth of the business at the moment, has been in the weight management. We've gone from last year, uh, i.e. 2012, there were 6,000 clean nines sold in the UK. In 2013, there were 47,000 mm. sold. I mean, it's just gone mad. So a lot more people, you know, five years ago, nobody had heard of Clean 9. Now, if you mention Clean 9, the odds of people having heard of it have gone way up. Maybe not in the far north of Scotland, but certainly in Warwick. <laughs> uh, gift shopping, very relevant this time of year, but of course there are things all through the year, birthdays, Mother's Day, Valentine's, all those sorts of things, lots of opportunities. It's also really important once you've got a customer to look after them and <coughs> that's the way you keep them. And lots more ideas. I'm sure you'll come up with um, ideas of your own. There's quite a lot of very good training available, um, specifically about retail. So I would check out the Breakthrough Group YouTube uh, channel. There's lots and lots of stuff on there. The, the link to that is on the, t it's pinned at the top of the Breakthrough Group page but also on soaringteam.com. Um, and if you're not going there regularly, I suggest you do. Andy's revamped that website, and it's brilliant now. And there's a lot of the Soaring Team trainings about retail available on there. So what we're going to be covering today, hopefully in about, it's going to take us about 40 minutes, word of mouth, launches, pups, the power of getting a regular customer base and how to look after your customers so that they stay loyal. So first of all, why is it important to retail and not just focus on team building? Of course the team building is what's going to give you your long-term income. But short-term, retail is going to put money in your pocket. And it's going to enable you to do that, those four CCs, regularly, each month. If you're still an assistant supervisor and you're retailing four case credits, you're making £270. A manager, that's going to be 60 quid more. That's just pure profit, just by retailing. And obviously, as you build up a regular customer base, doing those four case credits makes it really, really simple. You'll also access potential prospects through the retailing. An awful lot of people have come into the business through the products. I was one of them. So, you know, the products are the sort of front door of this business. Also, if you're retailing regularly, you will be able to show your team members how to do it. If you're struggling to build a retail base, 
you're not going to be able to feel confident talking to your team about it. And you'll also get your next promotion easily, quickly, you know, because you doing your four CCs comfortably and your team doing it will just catapult you up the marketing plan. And it's all about talking to people. It's the most important thing in our business. Um, talking and listening, of course, asking questions, as we were talking about yesterday, asking the questions like, how are you really, that will get people opening up so we can see if there's a, you know, if it's going to be appropriate and comfortable to, to share the product. But also sharing your product testimonials. We, you know, there's that old adage that facts tell, stories sell. We engage with stories at a much deeper level. So having stories about how the products have, have benefited you. I mean, Steve, who's just fighting his way back from meningitis, bless him. Um, you, your consultant is amazed at how strong your immune system was. Uh, uh, you know, probably because you're drinking the drinking gel. And we all have our favorite product stories. Certainly if you haven't got many yet, beg, steal and borrow them from everybody else because there's, a, there's an abundance of stories about. And then be an ambassador for the product. Share your enthusiasm. Focus on the benefits um, rather than the product ingredients, the science. Stories, not facts. But always, you know, be asking questions, discovering the needs, the problems, the issues, the challenges that people have. And be appropriate. I'm not a huge fan of upselling just for the sake of upselling um, in order to make more money. But recommending products that people might not have considered that are appropriate to them and can help them with an issue, that is is really, really important. Genuinely having people's best interests at heart. Um, sales, the word sale comes from sellia, which is a, an old Norse word meaning service. Not about making money or profit or whatever. It, it's about being of service. And I think if we're coming from service, people respond in a different way than if they feel we're just trying to get a bigger sale from them. So, launches. Really important for people starting their business, kicking off their business, to have a launch. To let people know what it's all about. It's training for your new distributor. It means they will get to know about the product range. And they'll also learn how to do a launch. So as they start to build a team, they can do a launch for, for their new people. Sharon? Sharon, yeah. we've lost the slides. Has everybody lost the slides? No. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I've lost them, Sharon, too. Oh, I've lost them back. Yeah, there you go. No. Hang oh. on. Oh, now I have. Now I have as well. <laughs> back? Are they back? Yeah. Yeah, yeah great. Um, Having a launch is a great way to get in front of a whole bunch of people. Um, it's fun. Everybody has a lovely time. It's simple. There's nothing complicated about it. And it's duplicatable. And it, it, will, it can get people into profit straight away. I did a launch on Friday for somebody brand new in the business. Um, she'd spent her £200. And she was really worried because she's a single mum, didn't know how she was going to manage. We did a launch. It was typical scenario, 10 people invited and all through the afternoon, phones and texts came to say, can't make it, something's cropped up, etc, etc. So we were down to two people. And at 5.30, she wanted to cancel and quit the business. But I was a stand that we, we created something because I'd driven all the way to London for this. So I suggested that she rang the two people who were coming and got them to bring a friend. And she went to see her next door neighbors. And she called back a couple of the people who said they weren't going to be able to make it and asked them 
again specifically if they could just pop in for half an hour. So we ended up just with four people, but she took sales of nearly three hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. So she actually made one hundred and eighty pounds profit, which meant she got her box for twenty quid, which you know she was almost in profit straight away, just in a couple of hours. And we got two new gel drinkers out of that, so there will be follow-up um, customers. And one of the people is very, very interested in looking at the business in the new year. So even from just a very, very small group of people, four people, and one of them was her mum, you know, you can get somebody started and give them confidence, which is so important. Start building your gel customers because that's going to give you that solid regular base. You let people know about the business as well and potentially you start building a team. So launch is really, really, really important. Lots of ways of doing a launch as well. It doesn't have to be a big you know, room full of 20 people. You can just open up your box with a girlfriend, with a colleague with a, you know, take it into work with you. You can drop by a neighbours, if family drop in, you can get the box out and say, look at this, I've just started this, what do you think? Have a look with me. Show and tell. Start opening the products up and rubbing them on and getting the literature out and reading stuff with, you know, be spontaneous, be fun with it. Share the stories that you've heard, share enthusiasm. And if you can show somebody how to do this, so they're confident, your new person is confident to do it on their own. They can start to generate sales. You know, the, the odd properly screen to a new mum, a uh, heat lotion to somebody who isn't sleeping, a bottle of bee pollen for somebody who's exhausted. So who do you invite to launches? Anybody and everybody. Friends, family, colleagues, neighbours, you know, friends of friends. Good to give seven to ten days notice, more than that and people forget, less than that and people are often booked up. Good idea to offer two dates as well, get two dates in the diary so if people can't make the first, they can make the second. And if they can't make either of them, say don't worry, just pop round when you've got five minutes and I'll show you what it's all about. Phone call, really, really important because emails and things people will, Yvonne, hi. Um, a phone call and a written invite. Phone calls allow people to actually engage with you. You can, you know, you can make it personal. You can tell them it's really important to you that they come along. And then a, a written invite or an email just to follow up so that they've, they've got a reminder. <coughs> Be precise with time and directions. Nothing worse than getting halfway through a launch and then a whole load of people arrive because they got lost on the way. And another call just the night before to remind people that it's happening and say how much you're looking forward to seeing them, just picking up on numbers and things. And do invite people to bring a friend along. That always really works and it can potentially double your numbers at a launch. Fortunes in the follow-up, as I said, Calling or emailing or texting to remind people, important. And then, on the night, you need your product presenter. Actually, I don't think that's essential, but what it is useful for is the product presenter is showing somebody that they can do this for themselves. Order forms, 10 reasons to drink, aloe, product brochures, your receipt book so that You've got that already. DVDs if people want information to take with them. Pens so that people aren't fumbling around trying to fill in their order forms. Welcome forms can be quite handy if there are people there that you don't know so that you can get everybody's contact details to follow up with. Drinking gel so people can try the drinking gel and some little shot glasses. And then you need the products. I generally take my pup box along. Uh, some people like to do a really nice display of products. I quite like to do it sort of Mary Poppins style, just putting things out of the box as you go and keeping it really, really informal. 
Um, in fact, I quite like, if the room allows it, to sit on the floor with my box and pull stuff out, rather than do it as a, a presentation. What works well is with, when everybody's participating and chatting and, you know, as you talk about the products and you hand them around and people are getting really involved because that involvement leads to, to more sales. Nice to have some music playing as people arrive, refreshments, nothing major, just, you know, a cup of tea and nibbles or a glass of wine or whatever. Nothing major though. This is all about having something that's simple and duplicatable. Informal, relax, no hard sell. Everyone needs to enjoy themselves. It's good for the, the new distributor, the person who's hosting the launch, to introduce the evening, to thank everyone for coming, and then they will hand over to their upline, the person with a bit more experience, to actually do the launch. But bless you, Julia. Sorry, good thank you. to create a context. So for the new person to just tell a little bit of their story, talk about, you know, why they're excited about the business, why they decided to get involved. It can open up people's receptivity to thinking, oh yeah, now I could do with some extra income. This is quite interesting. And they listen then in a different way. So the experienced person does the launch, i.e. they talk about the product, they share stories about the products and hand them around, but make it, you know, involve people and certainly involve your new distributor um, because they will already have a few stories of their own, even if it's just that they've already tried the tooth gel and they love it or whatever it is. Remember not to make medical claims. You don't know always who's in your, who's in the room. Um, and I got caught short or a year or two ago with somebody who turned out to be a scientist, one of the most emerald scientists I've ever come across, who every single thing I said, she challenged me. It was fine. Um, and she actually ended up putting in a, a big order. But do be very careful about making medical claims and saying this can cure something or, you know, solve a problem. Just stick with testimonials. And the important thing is that everybody has fun and gets excited about the product. Because if everybody has a good time, they're going to be in a much more, you know, willing mood. They're going to be much more interested. Good way to end is when you've done your overview of the products, just to remind them about the business opportunity. And I heard this from um, Chris Goldsborough, actually, and I thought it was rather good. She says that every launch, statistically, there are at least two people in this room who will be interested in our business opportunity. We don't know who you are, but if you think it might be you, please come and have a word with us later and we'll give you some info to take away with you. That means that people don't have to stick their hand up and publicly say that they're interested. They can just sneak up to you afterwards and feel comfortable about doing that. After you share the products, do try and get everybody to, to try the drinks, because um, that is our core product. Try and speak to each guest individually. Obviously, if you're hosting the party, you'll be doing that. But as the, the upline person who's doing it with your new person, really important to, to chat to everybody and, you know, just dig a little deeper, ask some forming questions questions, ask lots of open questions and find out a bit more about them. Help your help people make place their orders, answer all their questions. Um, make sure anyone who wants interest in the business, you know, follow up and being agreed. And thank everybody for coming. Now if it's somebody else's party and you've just been helping them, that's the point at which I will kind of slip away and leave everybody to you know, carry on and have a nice, jolly social time. But you may well want to stay for the nice, jolly social time, too. It's entirely up to you. So what do you get from launches? You get new customers. You get retail profit. You can get more launches booked. They may be ones 
focusing more on the other products. But often people will say, Could I, I know other people who'd be interested in this. Could I host a party for you? Um, or they might want to, to have a party in order to fundraise, for example. You'll also get new distributors who want to join the business. You'll certainly get case credit. So fun and income, which is what this business <coughs> is all about. Good to try and have an event every month. And you can mix it up. There are all sorts of different possibilities. You can just have little mini launches with a couple of people. You can have, a, have it as a coffee morning. It doesn't have to be an evening one. It can be a drop-in for mums after they've taken the kids to school. You could do it as a, as a tabletop. I know quite a lot of people have done sort of tabletop open housey things coming up to Christmas, where they've just got all the products out, um, invited people to, to just pop round for coffee and have a look what's there and maybe do some Christmas shopping and ask some questions. You could do it as a pamper party or a foot spa party, you could do it as a fundraiser, lots and lots of different ways to increase your case credits, build your customer base and find new prospects. And those are just some of the different kinds of things you can do. You can focus on weight management, toning wraps. We're going to be talking about this in a bit more detail tomorrow. So I'm now going to hand over to Julia Spran. Julia. Okay. Yes, morning. Said. Morning, everyone. So we're... Um, I, I, for those of you who don't know me, it might be useful just to, t to tell you who I am. Um, I'm Julia Scan. I've been in the business for about just over a year now. I'm a supervisor and um, that was really exciting last June going supervisor I have to say. Um, and what else can I tell you? I joined the business because I was in recruitment and I was absolutely hating it um, and I was just desperate to get out. I needed more time at home because my partner works abroad and um, I just wanted to have a better quality of life so I signed up with Forever and got myself a puppy who you've seen earlier and um, and, uh, and I've been working the business full time. Um, things changed just recently because I was offered a job uh, working in a school as head of careers, which is a really exciting job and one I never thought I'd ever come across. But um, it's really great. And uh, I broke up yesterday. I was exhausted, but um, I'm now working forever during the holidays. Um, so evenings, weekends, and during the holidays. And uh, so far, so good. So I'm going to talk to you about pup boxes. Let's go and get the slides up. There we go. Can everyone see the slides there? No. Nope. I can see the slides. Are you controlling them, Sharon? Yeah. Um, I'm not quite sure why people can't see them. I can now. I can see them. Anybody I think... not see them? <clears throat> I can't, Sharon. I can't, Sharon, but then I haven't been able to see them all the way through, so that's probably my technology. Oh, okay. All right. I will email them. Sharon, you're controlling them. You need to speak. Thank you. No, it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, fine. Okay, well let's let's go through, let's crack on anyway. So pup drops, um, because pup drops, I think well, they are brilliant because you you're basically giving people a box of products to try for themselves at home, and that's the best way that for them to find out about them. So what you can do is give them a box of products and say, look, um, take my, don't you don't have to take my word for it. You know, tr tr take these products home, use them in your normal bathroom routine. Um, and just you don't you know there's no obligation to buy. I just want you to let me know how you how you feel about them, and it may be because you're talking to someone about a condition, so dry skin or flaky scalp or something like that. So obviously, if they take the shampoo and the conditioner, for example, into the shower themselves, they'll find out how if the product's going to work for them or not. So um, you let them have the box for three or four days, uh, and of course, as it says on the slide, the pup box is working for you when you're not. So drop the box off, say you'll pick it up in three or four days time, arrange when you're going to pick it up. And um, you can include products relevant to the customer. So you can custom make a box, depending on whether it's men or skin care or it's for animal lovers, or whether it's a summer box or for sports people. Or Sometimes I do ones for um, a foot spa, so I might put together a sheet on a foot care treatment and then include all the products. That works quite well, actually. 
as people people pamper themselves. Another one I did, um, I did one with all the, the masks, the, the, the scrubs and the masks, and a lady invited her mum around and they spent, spent a, a really nice Friday evening pampering each other and watching telly, so that was a really successful one. Um, what to include? So in a standard pup, you've got aloe vera gel to taste. Um, I sometimes put in a pouch, you know, the, the pouches you get of aloe to go. Um, liquid soap, jelly, deodorant, tooth gel, moisturizing lotion, propolis cream, shampoo and conditioner, and then two aloe lips. Um, it's worth mentioning that perhaps for the aloe lips and the deodorant, um, you might want to say to people, look, um, either op open them and use them and keep them, or open them, use them, and, and I'll cut it with a hot knife so that um, so that it can be it's um, sanitary and hygienic to be passed on to the next person up to you. Um, but you can of course add, on the right hand side of this slide, you can of course add extra things, so heat lotion, aloe lotion, MSM, aloe scrub, suntan lotion, sunless tanning, Sonia serum, gentleman's pride and the aromatherapy shower gel or, or anything from the aromatherapy kit. Um, and relevant literature, I put in everything for literature, I put in all the DVDs, the 10 reasons to drink RG, 10 reasons to drink aloe, 10 Reasons for the Business, the Product DVD, the Your Future DVD, uh, Price List, Order Form, everything basically. And I sometimes put it in a plastic folder and, and hand it over separately rather than it all getting all scrunched up in the box and knocked about by the products. Um, yeah, and who do we give it to? Um, family, friends, neighbours, everybody really, colleagues, school mums, past and present customers. Um, what I have done in the past is I met someone at a fair and they bought a, a serum, a skincare serum, and when I delivered the serum I said, oh would you like to try the box, um, try the box for a few days, and I got another £150 order as a result of leaving the box, so it's, it's kind of upselling if you like. Um, give it to people you know and trust, beauticians, hairdressers, mobile therapists, sports clubs, nursery and toddler, toddler groups, local business owners and contacts from events and fairs and again reiterate you know there's no obligation but I'd really appreciate your feedback um, I did I have done in the past um, given people a questionnaire to fill in and say here's the box and would you mind here's a list of the products that are on here would you mind filling in what are your three favorite products and why just to give me some feedback that's quite powerful because people then know that when you come to pick up the box you're expecting them to, to report back on what, how they found it um, sometimes, uh, again, sometimes it might be worth mentioning um, if you do an event and you've got a big, uh, you've got a number of uh, questionnaires, you can um, give the prize away, which might be a pamper party. But everybody else who doesn't win, you can phone them and say, "Well, you didn't win this time, but I'm very happy to offer you a free pet box for a four-day trial." Um, as a thank you for entering into the competition, that sort of thing. That works quite well. That gives you lots of pet boxes out. Um, so what results can I expect? Uh, you get more retail sales, bigger customer base, new distributors who've been looking at the business, um, new prospects and customers through referrals, um, and average sale. If, if you do twenty, average, average sale is twenty-five pounds. If you do two drops a week, um, that's two hundred pounds income per month. So you could do something like you can make sure your pet boxes out are out maybe Friday to Monday, and then Tuesday to Friday or Tuesday to Thursday depending on so that makes sure you get your two boxes out a, um, a week uh, and of course you can re recoup your investment you're bringing in money and you're bringing in CC's so it's a really good way of, of doing that am I blathering? no not at all okay. it's brilliant I do blather when, um, when you're selling gel if people are interested in the gel self -talk, um, Julia. say again self talk Julia oh yeah sorry sorry um, Thank you. Um, when, you're selling, <clears throat> when you're selling the gel, when people are interested in drinking the gel, it's worth saying to them, well, it's, you're really not going to see any effect from one bottle. One bottle is only two weeks worth, and we really recommend you drink the gel for six to eight weeks before you see any significant results. So um, we always suggest three drink bottles of drink, drinking gel for the full 60-day trial. Um, stress the money back guarantee that if it doesn't work for you we'll give you your money back no quibble um, because really one bottle is, is you're not going to see any results and it's it's a waste of your time if you only have one bottle and then stop um, 
what I do sometimes is I offer people a discount as well for buying three bottles. Do you do that, Sharon? Uh, no, but I do offer post-dated checks. Um, it's it's almost it's not even necessarily having to sell the three bo the bottles and making sure you've got the commitment from them that they will buy three bottles. They're not just going to have one and then say, well, it hasn't worked. It doesn't make any difference. You've yeah. got to tell them that one bottle won't make a huge difference. But if they keep drinking it within three months, they will definitely notice a difference. It's always about over over. Um, under promising and over delivering because if you promise too much about what amazing results they'll get people's yeah. expectations are so high that they will end up being disappointed whereas if you under deliver the products that under promise the products will deliver and people are then delighted that they've had such an amazing result so it's it's finding that balance between being enthusiastic about the product and sharing good, good news stories, but not setting their expectations so high. You know, it's like a movie. Um, if everybody's raved about it, invariably you go and you're a bit disappointed. Because um, people also like to discover things for themselves. So you've just got to find that balance in the product. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if it's worth mentioning, but I always, I always give them this. Um, I always add that if you people are buying the gel, can you see that? Yeah. Get the dog out of the way. <laughs> Go away. Um, because that answers people's questions and it also gives them a bit of reassurance that we, about what they're doing. You know, when they take it, when they, when, how to keep it in the fridge, if you can mix it with other drinks, that sort of thing. And then. Um, um, the power of 20 dr gel drinkers. Um, if you have 20 regular gel drinking customers, um, that obviously is bringing you in cash flow, which covers the costs of um, tickets for trainings and success days, uh, phone bills and petrol, uh, marketing materials, books and DVDs, and um, personal use and new products to try. So it's, it's, they do recommend that you add an, a new product to your orders once a month so that you can get to know the, new, the various products in the range so that obviously if someone asks you about the product you need to know about it. Um, 20 gel drinkers will also give you your four cc's done and dusted so you don't have to worry about that. Um, it builds your belief, um, obviously helps more people to be healthy, helps you lead by example and, and customers will often join the business. You do hear, if you go to the um, the BP in the evenings, you will hear people saying they came into the business because of the products, and often it's through drinking through gel drinkers. Mm. Yeah, I think getting regular customers is really important, and it doesn't matter if it's a drinking gel or if it's the protein shake or if it's RG or if it's any of the supplements. The point is, if you've got people buying regularly from you. It helps you to know, you know, what your turnover is going to be every month, and it takes the stress off. Obviously, it's great to have regular deodorant users, but <laughs> mm. they're going to be buying every six months or every nine months, as opposed to every month. So it's always worth bearing in mind. Great to make the one-off sales of deodorant or lips or shampoo or whatever, um, and people will come back for those. But if you can get somebody um, benefiting from a product that they're going to be buying every single month, or they're going to be buying quite a few at a time, then you know that's gonna that's gonna help you more. Because looking after customers. Thank you for that, Julia. By the way, thank you for that contribution. Brilliant. Um, if you look after your customers and they feel cared for by you, and they trust you to give them sound advice and not just to upsell and try and make money out of them, they will stay loyal to you. They won't get poached by anybody else and they won't fall out of the habit of using the products. So just for your own kind of um, record keeping, good idea to just start a, a file on every customer. I just have a sheet of paper with their contact details 
any personal and family details that it's useful to remember, like names of kids, birthdays, any particular ailments or um, hospital visits or anything like that. So that, and and I always take notes every time I, you know, something comes up in a conversation, I'll just make a note of it. So that when I speak to them again, you know, six weeks later or whatever, I can say, well, how was the holiday? Or did you have a lovely birthday? Or how's your mum doing? Is she out of hospital yet? Whatever it is. Because then people feel that they have this connection with you. And I don't know about you, but if I don't write these things down, I forget. So just keep the details, what they've purchased and why they've purchased it, so that when you're following up, your conversation is, is relevant and they feel that they've got that relationship with you. Um, I personally also think that paper is better for this than spreadsheets, whatever you like, absolutely fine. But if a customer rings you and your you're not near the computer and you haven't got it all booted up, you can just go into your paper file and very quickly, while you're talking to them, find the details. Some people use a little postcard, you know, postcards in a box, A to Z. Some people use a, an A5 file. doesn't really matter. I have A to Z. I have... 1 to 31 for the days of the month, and I have January to December. So, for example, a deodorant user, I will put them in the diary in the January to December, six months from now, so I can give them a ring in six months. And here's Julia demonstrating. <laughs> Fantastic. This is my box. <laughs> And I've got um, alphabetic. It's alphabetical and also one to thirty-one. So just to show you, there you go. Brilliant. Um, I'll just put this. There we are. So you can just file people ahead, and then you don't miss any follow-ups. Also, if somebody's bought drinking gel, um, and they're going to be using it themselves, it's good to follow up within three to four days just to make sure that they you know they remember to put it in the fridge have they started drinking it what did you make of the taste all those sorts of things and then tell them that you're going to follow up again in 10 days time because that way you know you can keep a track on their expectations find out what's happening and make sure that they don't ever run out which is important because once people start drinking it you want to keep them on it regularly um, and if you let them slip then they'll get out of the habit and they're not as likely to get back into the habit again. Oh, I think you've lost my slide, hang on. Um, recommend products that they really need. Again it's not about upselling but if they mention something and as they get to know you and trust you People will, will ask you, have you got anything that could help me with blah, blah, blah? Or does your company do anything for athlete's foot or you know, whatever it is? Do you encourage people to use things for the full 60 days? So in the very unlikely event of somebody asking for their money back, I will suggest always that they keep using it for the full 60 days that they're entitled to because it may well be that, you know, if they're not getting results yet, that they, they will notice a difference by the end of two months. It's nice to say thank you. Um, various ways of doing that. It can be just write thank you on their receipt or send them a little card from time to time. Offer them a pup box, um, one of the personal use product packs that Julia was talking about. Great way to build... Their, their spend and reward loyalty with extra products. I tend to reward loyalty with product rather than with discount. So all of my regular gel drinkers for Christmas have had an aloe lips and a, a hand sanitizer in a little pouch with a tea bag. Um, the reason being that I could 
give them five pounds discount, or I could introduce them to more products. So I get more case credits, and the chances are that when they've finished using the hand sanitizer or the avocado soap or the lip balm or whatever it is, they'll reorder, they'll come back for more. Um, do let people know about new products, not in a pushy way, just in a, an educating way. It's all about building rapport and trust, and the best people to get referrals from are customers. Happy customers will tell you, you know, they will find you other customers. Um, I've had regular gel drinkers introduce their family to it. Um, lady who's been with me from the beginning, sister now, uses the drinking gel as well, um, which is an extra two bottles every month, which is fantastic. And do make sure they know about the business opportunity. The number of people who I've met doing stalls and events who've um, bought products from me, who've told me that they've bought products in the past, and if I mention the business, they say, oh, no, I've never heard about that. You know, my, my um, person I bought from never mentioned there was a business opportunity. So let people know. So... Hey, we've done it in 45 minutes. Fantastic. Use the products. The most important thing you can do is use the products yourself because it's that personal recommendation that, you know, makes all the difference. You know what it's like in a restaurant if you ask the waiter what they would recommend and their, their eyes light up as they describe one particular thing. You can tell the difference between if they've been told to sell lots of something because there's a glut of it and it's not selling well, or something that they do genuinely love. Share the product, look after your customers, keep a record, and get into the habit of doing that from, from the start. Keep sponsoring people, talking to people, talking to people, talking to people, building up your, um, your, your knowledge of the business by training, whether it's reading, listening, or doing, or actually going to events. And do check out all the videos on the Soaring Team retail page. You should all have been added to that by now. Um, lots of ideas on there for retailing. The Soaring Team Retail and Business Building Ideas Facebook group. So do check into that regularly because Andy's posting several ideas every day that you can beg, steal, and borrow. As a little to a little, do it again. Soon that little shall be much. So it may not feel like much selling the odd deodorant or lips, but it adds up. It really does. So, guys. Whew, that's a shock for me. Um, any thoughts, any questions? Anybody? Complete silence. Was that useful, guys? Speak yes, to it me, was. Somebody. Hello, Ooh. Sharon. Calm down. Calm down. Hello. <laughs> yes, it was useful, <laughs> darling. Really they good. always are. Can you hear me? Yeah. Good, 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 good. Well, good. part two, I can. Thanks. Part two is tomorrow, same time, 9.30. We're going to be covering, um, what are we covering? Events and tabletops, pamper parties, weight management, and the sports market. So lots more areas that you can start about, start thinking about moving into. So all you need to do now is go and have a lovely day, talk to people, and enjoy yourselves. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, darling. If See you tomorrow. Like the tomorrow. Please. So I will email you all a copy of the slides that Thank you. to refer back to. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon. Bye. 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 Bye.